So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, primary signal of the ignition, similar to what I did in the last video, but this time we've got some drive on it, and we're going to drive it at a constant speed so we get a more regular, era, a regular uh, readable pattern, and then we can work from there and uh, get down to it. Because uh, this is going to get a bit complex, okay? But, you know, this is what my videos are about. My videos are about the next level of mechanics, creative mechanics. Not the first part of mechanics you learn for the first 10 years, which is procedural mechanics. The ability to be able to follow rigid procedures is one thing. But this kind of level of mechanics, where you're in your own world with no, no one to guide you along to find out what's going on, you have to have a solid fundamental understanding of everything. I will be passing on information here that um, you probably won't see in other videos, but uh, is well worth knowing. First things first, we turn the uh, engine on and we get it spinning. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the primary voltage and the waveform that comes off the coil magneto without it plugged into the module. But what I want you to observe is how the voltage changes or how the voltage signal increases as we increase RPM. So you see, higher RPM, the voltage increases. Okay, and at lower RPM, the voltage decreases. Now, what's going on there? Okay, what we're going on, what we've got going on there is I wanted you to notice that increase and decrease in the amount of power versus the engine speed because the switching of the module is based on that signal that means that as the voltage increases and decreases the trigger will occur at a different point and the spark will occur at a different point in the timing and so that as we increase RPM and we increase the voltage output from the magneto we thus change the actual ignition timing point, so the point that the spark occurs. So the more voltage we have, the spark occurs earlier and earlier as the RPM of the engine increases. Now we'll move to the timing light and I'll show you with the same RPM range how the timing increases. Considering that there's no mechanical advance, electronic advance or anything like that, the uh, components inside the little tin box are passive components, okay? It's not an active thing that actually adjusts the timing curve. It's simply that it senses a point of voltage on the primary side and then releases it, which I'll show you. Um, and that as the RPM increases and the voltage changes and rises, that point changes and gets earlier and earlier. So now I'll show you that same effect with the timing light. I'm going to run the motor and put the timing light on it. I've had to put a spark plug in the top there and ground that so we've got a spark to ignite the timing light and I'll put the inductive clip and I've had to plug the module in because we've got to have spark to show you the timing light. That's the video, okay, doing that, that black line going up the screen. You can see there's 10 degrees. Now as I increase it, you'll see the timing increase and advance further and further. We go up speed. Now you see that, it starts to advance. Now we're getting about 12 degrees. A bit more, we go up to 14, 15, about 16 degrees. See as we bring it down, okay? So again, speed increases, advance, advances. Now you see the effect of the advance, okay? So there's our zero degree point, and it was sparking at about nine degrees, 10 degrees, okay? And as I increased RPM, it advanced to about 16, 17 degrees. All right, so that's before top dead center. So as you can see, uh, the only thing that actually advances the ignition timing in the spark, and the point that the spark actually advances, is the increasing primary voltage on that signal that I showed you before. As the primary voltage and the sign changes, and the slope of the voltage of those uh, of that negative peak down the bottom changes, um, accordingly it will change the um, the time at which the uh, box reacts and um, 
releases the uh, primary or opens the primary to dump the, uh, the voltage into the secondary and create the spark. So that is where the timing advance system comes and of course a four stroke we need to advance the timing as we increase the RPM. Okay, So it actually does that. Now what we can take from that is uh, not just the knowledge of how the uh, timing actually works but we now know that the voltage going into the primary side of the coil is very dependent um, and the timing is very dependent on that voltage following up and down a predictable uh, amount from low to higher RPM and that will be affected by not just the coil impedance or any changes to it but it will also be affected by the air gap between the actual coil and the actual physical rotating magnets. So what that shows you there is that the air gap between it is actually quite critical because if you have too wider air gap you'll get too lower voltage produced and therefore you won't get enough ignition advance okay so the air gap between the um, thingo is not just a matter of measuring it um, you know with a business card as a lot of people might show you when they're putting those coils in I haven't got an external coil so it's difficult for me to show you but it's not just a matter of putting a business card in there you actually need to get the specifications of the air gap for the particular motor that you're doing and you need to set the air gap at that particular um, value okay because that particular value will subsequently, as I've demonstrated, determine what the ignition timing is and what the ignition advance is for that motor. And you want that to be right, don't you? One other thing I failed to mention, when you're actually measuring the uh, specific air gap between the uh, coil and the, uh, the magneto, rotary, mag uh, the rotating magneto, um, you might be tempted to use steel feeler gauges. Don't do that. Don't use any kind of ferrous feeler gauge. Um, it has to be non-magnetic. So what you'll find often with feeler gauges is that there's a couple of gold-coloured feeler gauges. They're brass feeler gauges, and that's expressly what they're for. You know, people demonstrate using a business card, and if you happen to have a business card and you measure it with your vernier calipers or whatever, and you find out your business card is the correct gap according to the manufacturer, then by all means use it. But check first. Don't just use any gap because as you can see the gap is critical to the rise time of the primary voltage and the, and the ignition timing point relies on that rise time being according to original equipment manufacturer specifications. That's why the gap needs to be what it needs to be. Next thing we're going to do is there's the range and the milliseconds. I'm going to be adjusting that a little bit okay just so that you can see. Now what we've got is the ignition is actually plugged in so we're going to run up the uh, motor with a spark plug in the lead so it's going to be sparking at a regular spark and running at a regular speed so let's uh, turn it on now we've got a spark and we've got a spark line so now you can see the clear difference between those others let's just turn the voltage down a bit you can see those two uh, you can see those two humps there, okay, they're the DC, they're the positive side, and then that negative side where the V was, we've now got the triggering point for our spark. Now, I'll zoom in there and I'll show you where the actual coil disconnects. You see the V down the bottom there? You see that V down the bottom that we had before, the clean V? It's now got a break in it. So that's where the module is actually disconnecting the coil primary. The secondary, the coil primary energy drops into the secondary and we get a spark. And you now reduce it and you can see down the bottom the inductive blip all the way down the bottom of the screen coming off that spark. You see down here, okay. Now I'll uh, expand the voltage again and I'll just reduce it. And we can see when I shut it, when I go up to the full scale of voltage on the thing, 5 volts per radical, we can see we've got our we can see we've got our primary ignition signal there, but now we've got our secondary component which is being reflected back through the coil due to these coils being mutually inductive. I've explained in earlier videos. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to zoom right down in onto the spark line 
and we're going to have a look because if we zoom down in there that will actually give us the uh, time of how long the spark is sparking for and there we have it so I've zoomed in to the spark you see that zoomed right in you can see the left hand side here this is the point where I showed you in earlier explanations and earlier videos where the spark this is the energy created from the secondary that overcomes and ionizes the air inside the gap and then allows the spark and current to flow and now let's search around in this I've got a spark plug in there that's a, that's a specific gap but what I'm going to do next Close the timing down a little bit. Shut the voltage down a bit. You can see the slope, okay? And there you can see the slope. All right. You can see the spark line on the left starts here. The coil spark dissipates. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually close and open the gap by having a shorting lead on there so that you can see the difference between a wide gap representing increase in compression temperature and density of the fuel or under load um, and then you can see a, uh, a, a very small gap and a very small voltage required to actually jump over it you can see the difference and uh, the other side of it that we're going to cover is that line on the far left hand side the long peak okay we're going to also look at that but I've got to change the scale on the uh, oscilloscope sensor to a much higher times 10 value so that we can actually uh, look at these inductive spikes 